We are here in the harbor of Den Helder, which is the home base of the Dutch fleet. And behind me you can see the ocean patrol vessel Friesland, which is one of the newest ships of the Dutch Navy. It's used for counter-drug operations and anti-piracy operations in the Caribbean or in Afri on the African coast, and it's quite successful. It got its name from the destroyer Friesland, which served during the Cold War and was extensively used for anti-submarine operations. The Netherlands lost almost all their ships in World War II, so the Admiralty had to concoct a plan to restore their navy. Its numbers and composition were dictated by the capabilities of the military and industrial facilities of the Netherlands, as well as the loss of many of their colonial territories by the end of the 1940s. Another factor that affected the shape of their post-war navy was that the country joined NATO their fleet had to take an active role in the joint efforts of the Alliance in protecting Atlantic communications from the Soviet threat. Thus, the Netherlands focused on creating a small fleet with anti-submarine ships at its core. Friesland was the name of a class of eight anti-submarine destroyers designed in 1947. The Friesland class was designed at a time when other navies were also researching new technologies. There was a need for new ships, because in times of war, ships quickly reach the end of their lives and don't last very long. In England, the Daring class was designed, and in America, the Gearing class. The propulsion system of the Dutch destroyers was mainly based on that of the Americans. The weapons systems on board were Swedish, and the radar and gunfire control systems were all developed in the Netherlands. Friesland performance characteristics. Length, 116 meters. Beam, almost 12 meters. Draft, slightly more than five meters. Full displacement, 3,070 tons. Armament, two twin Bofors Mark 10 120 millimeter artillery guns. Six single 40mm Bofors AA guns, model 1948. This is the Mark 10 120mm cannon, a Swedish design, which was placed on board the Friesland class anti submarine hunters in the 1950s. The ships had two of these turrets, each weighing 68 tons and with a firing rate of 42 shots per minute per barrel. They could be used against seaborne or ground based targets. Anti-submarine armament. Two quad Bofors 375mm anti-submarine mortars. Two depth charge racks. This is the anti-submarine mortar of the Friesland class. These ships were the world's first to be equipped with this weapon. It was capable of firing a projectile of 200 kilograms over a maximum distance of 1,600 meters. Propulsion. Four Babcock and Wilcox boilers and two workspore shaft geared turbines. Power, 60,000 horsepower. Maximum speed, 36 knots. Range, 4,000 nautical miles at 18 knots. I spent uh, three years at Friesland class destroyer Overijssel. Friesland class destroyers are uh, rather sophisticated as for the propulsion system. For us uh, coming from British originated ships, etc., who were rather simple. It was a good thing to do to have these sophisticated uh, engines. High temperatures, high pressures, and you always had to be, uh, as we call it, qui vive, but it was worthwhile. Uh, well, as MEO, I had uh, 75 uh, ratings and CPOs and POs under me for the whole ship, was hand the installation was handled by hand. No automation at all. So you needed much people. The lead ship of the series, Friesland, entered service in the spring of 1956. In summer of the same year, she joined a small division of ships of the Netherlands Navy and set sail on an honorable but quite surprising mission. If in the early 50s you were to ask a Dutch naval officer whether he would like to pay a visit to Russia, he would have responded by saying it would never happen, not until Easter and Pentecost take place on the same day. The Netherlands military ships arrived at the shores of our country for the first time, 
wherever the Dutch officers and sailors showed up during their stay, they broke the ice and engaged in friendly small talk with Soviet citizens. And uh, yeah, the men in, uh, in in the sailors arriving in Leningrad were overwhelmed by the huge amount of attention they got from Russian civilians. All of Leningrad had come to see those crazy Westerners. It was a huge news item at the time. Concurrently, a Russian squadron visited Rotterdam. Soviet sailors impressed the citizens of Rotterdam with their vocal mastery. Performing a popular Dutch song and singing it in the local language. When I was 17 years old, I was a kid, children soldier. I go to met met Haremais at Friesland to New Guinea. In 1962, the presence of the Netherlands Navy became necessary in Southeast Asia, where the conflict between Indonesia and the Netherlands was heating up in regards to which state West New Guinea should belong to. The history of this confrontation had started after the end of World War II when the Malay Apelago, colonial territories of the Netherlands, declared their independence following the end of the Japanese occupation in 1945. In the 1950s, the Republic of Indonesia had played an active role in Southeast Asia and refused to abandon hope of taking control of the last Netherlands colony in the region, West New Guinea. In the early years of the 1960s, Indonesia, with support from the USSR and China, opted for open military confrontation against the Netherlands, we went on patrol and saw a lot of action. Among other things, we saved a Dakota aircraft that was shot down. When patrolling, we chased motorboats and fired upon them. On August 14th and 15th, 1962, we provided gunfire support at Misu. I came aboard HMS Friesland in 1962 as cook third class, so I was a young helper. I was the youngest sailor on board the ship. I stayed in the galley and we were cooking for the entire crew 24 hours a day. When the alarm went off, I had to go to my alarm station. I had to load ammunition for the 40 millimeter Ehrlichons. I carried ammunition to the cannon, and then they fired it. Following extensive negotiations with the USA and NATO, Western New Guinea joined Indonesia in 1963. The Netherlands lost their colonies in the Pacific Ocean, which had belonged to them for around three and a half centuries. I was, veteran when I was, I was years a war old. veteran at 18 all years my, old. All, my school all of my school friends in the Netherlands had only taken day trips to amusement parks, while I had traveled around the world, seen war, and been distinguished as a war veteran. In the 1960s through 70s, after shipborne hydroacoustic equipment had been upgraded, Friesland continued her duties in the North Atlantic. Her primary role remained as being an anti-submarine ship, searching for and tracking Soviet submarines. She continued to do so until the very end of the 1970s, at which point the latest Courtenaire-class frigates began to enter service in the Netherlands Navy. Most of the Friesland-class anti-submarine destroyers were sold to Peru in the 80s, where they continued their service for many more years. But Friesland herself had a different fate. She was decommissioned in 1979 and eventually scrapped. However, the name Friesland still lives on in the Navy. A new ship has been commissioned, a patrol vessel, which has successfully served the Navy for a few years already.